Hello friend, are you a beginner in Terraria looking to up your build game? Maybe you're a Terraria veteran who's starting to get upset at your unsightly wooden box houses. Whichever you are, you've come to the right place. This video will cover 8 basic tips to help you start building things that you like. There are lots of great YouTubers out there who have made really detailed building tutorials, but many of them were pretty intimidating for me when I first started out. That's why this video will only cover general tips to help and enable you to explore your creative juices. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain, encourage and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Let's begin. Tip number 1. Irregularity and Variety For some strange reason, at least 90% of players' first ever house will default into something like this. A box. A wooden box. A wooden box with a workbench, a chair, and a torch. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Chef's kiss. Well, I don't blame you, it's pretty instinctive and it looks pretty good actually. But when you build a couple of these, you might start to realize that maybe doing boxes on boxes wasn't the most aesthetic of choices. That's why the first tip is to build in irregular shapes. Instead of doing a rectangle, why not do some random protrusions here and there? An extra room hanging off the side here maybe? Perhaps a small little attic? Or a diagonal path to a basement or a dungeon of sorts? If you want, you can build a small little tower off one side of a structure for a little more pizzazz. There we go. I know it looks like an atrocious mess right now, but once you start to decorate things a little with more variety and irregularity, it will become a bit more pleasing to the eyes. Also, use a hammer. Hammers can change the shape of blocks, so you can make stuff like diagonal edges, lower the height of blocks, and so on. Hammering is key if you want to explore all the different forms of various blocks and platforms. There is nothing wrong with symmetrical builds as well, but the key here is to avoid a pure box as far as possible. As you decorate it, you might also decide to add things or compartments along the way. But if you're all for symmetry, go for it. Tip number 2. Piece by piece, room by room. If you feel overwhelmed by building in general, or if you have no idea what to build at all, try to think of it as a puzzle of sorts. You start out with some irregular shape, then you see how to fill it in. For example, from that shape we did at the start, I've decided to put a wall here, separate things like this, make this a thing, and so on. If you view it as a fun little building puzzle, you can approach it step by step, room by room, as more digestible pieces. I know what it feels like to be so overwhelmed by huge building projects. That's why my 5 star island is still ugly to this day. The keyword here is variation. Try to avoid designing every single room in the exact same way. If you want to up your building game, don't just throw in the same wooden bench and chair in the same configurations. Mix it up a little. Instead of a crafting bench, try maybe a table instead. Instead of one chair, maybe have two. Maybe for some of your rooms, add in a little decal like this by placing extra blocks at the corners of the room. Try exploring different types of furniture as well. I'll cover this in greater detail in a bit, but just try throwing whatever you can find down into the room. Maybe it'll turn out great. But once again, most importantly, take things step by step, room by room. Go at your own pace so you don't get overwhelmed and give up. It's really a lot less intimidating than you think. I'm sure you can do it. Tip number 3. Have some themes. If you are finding it hard to get inspiration, why not try some themed houses? Ever since Terraria introduced pylons, it's no longer efficient to build NPC apartments or prisons. Since you are going to have to make houses in different biomes for teleportation anyway, why not have some fun with that? It could be as simple as making a nice beach resort or fishing village by the sea for the ocean pylon, or a warm cabin or rest stop in the icy tundra for the snow pylon. These are great starting points if you really have no idea on what to do. When you're just starting out, you don't need to do anything huge or complex either. Trying to work with items and materials you can find in those biomes usually works out fine, and you're also familiarizing yourself with the different blocks in the process. The important thing is to just give building a try. As with many things in life, the more you try and do them, the more experience you accumulate and the better you get at it. 
Most people also play multiple worlds, so try out a different style of the snow biome cabin, or even try something completely different. So yeah, you can try out themed building if you need some help in the idea department, especially in the very beginning. Tip number 4, wall and block variety. This tip is a little more practical. I'll show you how we can create some of these nice variations and variety that I've been talking about. One of the simplest and most immediate ways to spice up your builds is to avoid using a single type of wall for each room. For example, it's easy to just load up a room with wooden balls and call it a day. But when you do that, the room starts to look dull, even before you place any furniture. The rule of thumb I always follow is to use at least two types of walls. And with quick wall replacement, designing is easier than ever. Let's take this wood walled room as a starting point. If you head over to the ice biome and grab some boreal wood, you can make some boreal wood walls, which offer a slightly different texture. One easy thing to do is simply make a striped pattern, either vertically or horizontally depending on the texture of the walls. Or even more simply, just line the outlines of the room. Or you could also just fill in the bottom half with your second wall of choice. Mahogany walls are also great as well if you're looking for a horizontal configuration. A trick I really like is to use glass walls, which can be made by smelting sand at a furnace. Even if your room doesn't turn out that great, just throw in a window like this and things instantly look ever so slightly better. I think it's the fact that you're letting in some natural light, and also cause you can see the background. So as you can see, things immediately look more refreshing once you introduce some variation and different walls into your build. As for blocks to use, one of my favourites are the bricks. These are usually made at a furnace, and they come in various patterns and colours. For example, there's the sandstone brick, the grey brick, the red brick, and so on. My favourites have to be the ebonstone brick, which has a nice clean pattern when you mosaic them together. And the snow brick of course, which is light and clean as well. The best part is, many of these bricks also turn into walls. And brick walls in general are a lot easier to work with as a beginner, so make sure you check those out. As you explore with different walls and blocks, you'll figure out some nice synergies or some interesting combinations. For example, I've realised that different types of stone walls look great together, even if you randomly throw them on the wall in sporadic intervals. It adds some nice texture sometimes that you can't really get with uniformity. I'm not saying that it will work all the time, but sometimes it does, you get lucky, and everything just looks natural. If you want to have a catalogue, just look up walls or blocks on the Terraria wiki and browse the tessellations to your heart's content. It'll be fun for sure. Tip number 5. Great crafting stations. Now that I've covered the general approach to building, I thought that it'd be helpful to cover some amazing crafting stations that can give you access to a plethora of blocks and furniture. I'll also cover some great furniture options and how to utilize them in your own build. To start off, you absolutely must make a sawmill. These can be made at a workbench using wood, iron, and chain. Chains can also be made at an anvil using iron. A really easy recipe with readily available materials early on. Sawmills allow you to craft most household furniture, such as sofas, benches, bathtubs, toilets, and pianos. I'll come back to pianos later on. If you have different types of wood, you can also make variations of these, and they look completely different most of the time. For example, I quite like the aesthetic of shade wood furniture. It has a pretty nice, clean, modern feel to it. Furniture using dynasty wood purchased from the traveling merchant is another crowd favorite. It's more oriental and Japanese in style. One of my absolute favorite specific furniture types to make is the dresser. This bad boy is both a storage chest and a place where you can customize your default outfit. As someone who uses the familiar set most of the time, or I guess transparent armor if you want to think of it that way, dresses are perfect for changing up colors once in a while. Plus, they look pretty good and they usually fit nicely in rooms. Not to mention there are also tabletops, so you can place a candelabra or a glass jar or whatever if you want to. Amazing piece of furniture, great for making study or dressing rooms too. 
Sawmills can also make things like weapon racks and item frames, which add a customizable aspect to your build, since you can place whatever item or weapon on these. Maybe you have a potion room, place something there so you'll remember. Maybe you have a chest for melee weapons, mark that out visually for yourself. Or maybe you just want to display your prized weapon as a mark of pride. The possibilities are endless. Mannequins and Wu Mannequins are also a great piece, since you can dress them up by right-clicking on them, then dragging your clothes or armor into these little slots. So make a sawmill, they're awesome. Next, you're also going to want a heavy workbench. These require wood and iron bars and are made at an anvil. The heavy workbench allows you to work with stone and other rocky materials, expanding your arsenal of blocks, walls and furniture in meaningful ways. For example, you can make the stone slab, which is another classic block and wall for many builders out there. These are great if you are going for a more rustic or medieval feel. You might also be interested in the statues that you can make here. Want to spell your name on the roof? Just make a couple of alphabet statues and go ham. You can make some animal statues too, like the penguin or firefly statue. I don't think I need to mention this, but make sure you have a workbench and an anvil as well. Those two are really basic, but give you access to things like chests, trapdoors, and so on. There are way more crafting stations, including specialized ones, but I'll briefly talk about those in a bit. Tip number 6. Loot furniture from all around the world. Once you start getting into the whole furniture business, you might start to realize that the costs add up rather quickly, especially if you're making a whole bunch of them. Pianos, for example, require books and bones from the dungeon, which might be somewhat inaccessible right off the bat. But maybe you want one in your starting house. In that case, just explore the world and steal them from underground cabins. I absolutely love these cabins. They come with chests, free furniture, some crafting stations, and even painting sometimes, which are another dimension of customization, which I won't go into in this video. While I'm at it, Let's talk about some of the special crafting stations that you might need to loot around the world. These allow you to make special themed furniture sets. For example, if you like the look of sky furniture, you'll need to find a sky mill from sky houses if you want to make more. You'll need a bone welder for bone themed furniture, a honey dispenser for honey and bee themed furniture, and so on. Some of these themed stations can be made by yourself, like the glass kiln for glass furniture, which is another one of my favourites because it's so modern and pretty sleek. The glass lanterns and lamps are just so nice looking and great for minimalist houses. Light sources might be another annoying category to mass produce because they might need various precious metals to craft. This becomes trivial down the road, but it's going to be difficult using your limited gold to make a chandelier instead of a gold armour upgrade right at the beginning. Fortunately, chandeliers are extremely common in these underground cabins. You can even get crafting stations like looms, buffing furnitures like a sharpening station, various uncraftable statues that may have some summoning functions. These are all free anyway, so just grab them and take them home. Remember that puzzle approach to building that I was talking about before? That works here too. It's pretty fun to see where your loot can fit into your house. Tip number 7. Light Sources since I touched on light sources a little, let me briefly talk about them. Try to avoid using basic torches for everything. They don't even look that good to begin with, especially if you just load up your entire house with them. Use things like candles, candelabras, chandeliers, lanterns, lamps, and so on. One of my favourite simple ones to use is the Tiki Torch. It's really cheap and it looks pretty neutral and clean. It fits into most rooms without issue and it has a warm glow to it. If you do like torches, explore the various options that you have. You can have coloured torches, gem torches, theme torches and the like. They all have different glows and designs. By extension, the campfires you make with them are different as well, and I like using these as room centerpieces. Just look at this fun little dungeon. Personally, I like the bone torches for its nice clean white light, but maybe that's just me. Once again, the keyword is variation. Injecting variety will do lots for your builds, if done in moderation. Tip number 8. 
quality of life. The last thing I'd like to cover are a few quality of life settings or functions that may be helpful to you. First of all, we have the smart cursor. On PC, you can toggle this by pressing the control key, which brings up this little yellow box when you try to build stuff. The smart cursor is atrocious for placing actual blocks, so don't use it when you're building your foundation. However, it's great for filling in walls. All you have to do is hold down the mouse button and your character will systematically fill in all the walls around you. It's great. The smart cursor is also amazing when you want to build stairs using platforms. Cause once you get the position right, you can place down stairs right away without going through the hassle of hammering each and every platform into the right shape. This saves you loads of time. This also works for minecart tracks as well if you ever want to use those. Next, we have the quick block replace function. This should be turned on by default, but if it isn't, you can find this little button over here at the top left to turn it on. This allows you to easily replace any existing blocks that you've already placed down. So if you've already built a room out of wood, for example, and you want to remodel, you can simply choose, say, ice bricks and just replace the structure without tearing it down. This is a great nifty little function, and I love it. We also have the ruler tool, which you can toggle on and off at the upper left as well. This one lets you measure exactly how many blocks you want your builds to be, which is useful if you're planning to have something symmetrical. I don't usually use this because it's way too troublesome, and I usually lose count, but it's here if you need it. Lastly, note that there might be a couple of building accessories that you might be interested in. There is a whole bunch of them, but I'll just touch on the few that I find might be important. Firstly, we have the Extendo Grip, which is sold by the Travelling Merchant, and wearing it increases your block placement range by 2 blocks vertically and 3 blocks horizontally. We also have the Bricklayer and the Portable Cement Mixer, also from the Travelling Merchant, and these increase your block and wall placement speed, respectively. Lastly, the tool belt from the Goblin Tinkerer increases your range by a uniform one block across the board. Note that Journey Mode characters also have a toggle to increase placement range, which stacks with these accessories by the way. And if you're really into building, Journey Mode is probably your best bet. There are also some accessories associated with painting and placing actuators, and you can look those up if you're interested. Conclusion that's about it for Zuzu Corrin's 8 beginner building tips. Which one was the most useful for you? Leave a comment on which one you liked best. Building can be intimidating, but if you just take it easy and enjoy the process, everything will turn out alright. Remember to take things a step at a time, room by room, and try to have more variation in general. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and join the Zuzu Corrin family so you won't miss another upload. This has been Zuzu Corrin. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.